so welcome to my first slash second YouTube <laughs> video ever. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy making this fantasy landscape painting and also this satisfying tape peel. Here we go. Alrighty, so as you can see, as we peel this tape away, um, there's a white canvas and some pencil sketches underneath. So I did all this beforehand and then I taped it with masking tape and I used an X-Acto knife to cut out um, the shapes of the parts that I wanted silver and I took it outside and I spray painted it and peeled the tape off and here we are. So I accidentally started recording in black and white, but you know what? It can be a fun game. So guess what color this is in the comments and whoever gets it right will get $5. I'll Venmo it to you if you guys have have Venmo first person to comment what colors they think this is all right so we got yellow pink and some purple now but I'm gonna take the answers yellow or pink the first person that comments um, so right now I'm just working on the sky I like to start with the furthest point in my painting uh, which is usually the sky and I'm just being careful to avoid all that silver that I just did And you know what if I cover it up a little bit, it's not that big of a deal uh, It was raining when I spray painted it So there's like slight patches in the spray paint anyway that I'm gonna have to go over and fix later. So um, Yeah, but I'm just taking my time and I'm using some pastel colors and making sure that I'm blending them all together and building up my layers I'm trying to add a little bit of a cloud effect here with this yellow right now. Um, yeah. Alrighty, so right here I decided to go ahead and slow everything down for you guys so you could see what I'm doing. Not quite in real time, but more real time than the rest of the video. Um, so here I want to just focus on my blending. So I dip my brush once and I put the paint on the canvas So then right there I dipped into some water and wiped my brush off to, uh, to get a lot of that excess paint off to blend it into the pink color. And then this is the same brush. I probably even wiped it off a little bit more to blend this section over here. I dipped in my paint again and I'm using all of that paint until it starts to fade out. Uh, then I'm going into the areas where I want a nice blend with very little paint on my brush and a more wet brush and trying to blend it out and alternate between water and wiping your brush off when you're trying to get a really nice blend. So that's basically what I did for the sky, just back and forth. I blended all these colors um, as best I could. And working with acrylic paint, it's much harder to blend than oils or anything because the paint dries so fast that I highly recommend doing little sections at a time when you're trying to get a nice blend. Because if you try to lay that yellow down over the whole sky and then blend it into the pink after it's dry, you're going to have a way harder time. So work while it's wet, work fast, and if not, then acrylic paint might not be the best medium. Um, I really enjoy working in oil paint. I've only recently gotten into acrylic the past few years, and it was a large, large adjustment with how the paint dries. I really didn't like it for a long time. Um, so if you guys want to see me jump back into oils sometime, let me know. But now we're just doing the cliff, some of the foreground. Um, the foreground I'm trying to make very dark. I'm trying to make it feel like it's very uh, close to you. There's no atmospheric haze involved. It's just very crisp, clear, dark colors. Whereas as you see in a second here, when I do the land masses that are further away, I try to make them a lighter gray to um, add that perspective. And even to add perspective within this little chunk of foreground, I tried to make the cliffs that were closest to us darker. 
all right so i chose a light gray to do this background um because again i wanted it to look like it's much further away like it's far out in the sky and there's maybe some atmospheric haze and i decided to do a gradient and again really try to focus on my blending so as you can see i even go back over that little section with both of the colors i used and flip back and forth between them to get that smooth gradient um and then now we're filling up the top section and trying to make that one again a little bit lighter than the one we just did to give it some perspective and i decided that i wanted it to be even lighter on the left side over here because it's so close to that moon so i tried to make it really bright right there because it's closest to our light source as well as at, at the left up top as well Alrighty, so here comes the last piece of the foreground. Um, I made a very blue-gray color. Uh, I wanted some contrast and coolness and warmness between the sky and the foreground and the landscape. Um, also, this silver tree is going to be a cherry blossom tree, so uh, that's going to be very warm and pink as well. So I felt like having some more cool-toned grays could be really nice to add some contrast and some more mood into my painting right here i was trying to make it make it look more three-dimensional and i ended up just covering it up and going with that flat style that i've been doing with just a gradient on the top um, to keep it all pretty uniform so yeah painting in between these trees was a pain in the butt i'm not even gonna lie um but yeah, here we go. I added our gradient in while our paint's still wet and just trying to blend it out. Um, yeah. Alrighty, welcome back. So, you guys haven't left at all, but my <laughs> battery died last night, and um, I just wanted to finish up blocking in all the land last night, regardless that it died, so I'm very sorry, but the only thing that I did was fill in this bottom section here, with this, and here with this dark blue. Um, it's the same blue that I used over in this section except for in this section I mixed a little dark gray in at the bottom here but like this blue and this blue are the same um, so I need to add some highlights and shadows into my land masses because they're looking a little one-dimensional and obviously I covered up a lot of like the trees and it looks kind of messy so I need to go back over the silver but I really want to add some like this is just blending in so much I really want to add some um, highlights and make that pop, but I think before I do that, I might just tape my animals on and see how they're looking because I still haven't decided what fully I'm doing with that and if I'm just going to leave them how they are or um, change it up. And also these jellyfish in here, I don't know if you can still see it kind of, there we go, hi jellyfish. Um, I think I want to paint them on there or if, decide if I just want to cover that up completely too. So this part, it, you might see me going in one direction and then just completely change my mind. But I'll try to be mindful and explain what I'm doing as I go in my thought process and decisions and everything. But alright, let's get to work. So here I'm just coloring the animals I cut out with some colored pencils. Um, I'm using Prisma colored colored pencils. Highly recommend. I love them. Um, they're expensive, but if you can have, if you have any art thrift stores or anything near you, that's where I got uh, a lot of mine. So for these shapes, I'm just focusing on layering the pencil, and I chose maybe five or six colors before I started coloring all the animals. I'm trying to keep the color scheme the same for all of them, so the whole painting kind of feels unified. So I tried to pick some. Um, 
purple and blue and red tones just to give them some variance but still kind of stay within one color palette and I'm just layering the color um, as I go adding in more shadows and more making my color more opaque uh, so as you can see I did these in a sketch before and I used a Prismacolor cool erase pencil to do the sketch just in a red color um, so if you haven't used one of those pencils, I highly recommend getting one. It's a colored pencil that you can erase. And I really love how these blue and yellow tones laid over the red. And I think that if I started, um, my sketches in just regular pencil, then these animals would have turned out very different. And I actually really like how, um, a few of them turned out. So I want to experiment more with using a Prismacolor Cool Erase Pencil because this was my first time using one. I found one at the local art thrift store near me. It's called Indigo Hippo. If anyone lives in Cincinnati, I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. And also, this tiger turned out really cute. I really enjoyed paint, uh, drawing all the stripes on onto him. But as you can see, I'm just layering the color, the blue color, more in the areas where I feel like there would be a shadow, and I'm going in with a red and doing all the stripes. So I don't really like how the face of the tiger turned out. Um, I wish I would have spent some more time on it, especially when I go and add this black on the face. I think uh, I made it worse, but um, adding all the darks in is really important to get that contrast that I was looking for, the really light yellow areas and the really dark black areas. I think I could have spent even some more time and pushed the contrast of all these animals even further but uh all right back to painting so my cat naruto wanted to be a uh, assistant painter today so as you can see he's watching me uh, then he tries to help a little bit uh too much i'll say do any of your animals do this when you're trying to paint or draw or do homework or whatever and just have to constantly harass you <laughs> let me know but um I wanted to make a really pretty uh cherry blossom tree I love how they look outside and it's just springtime right now and I was uh I keep seeing them just around my neighborhood and city and stuff and I really uh was inspired to paint one so I based the whole entire color scheme of this painting around this cherry blossom tree uh, so that's why I chose a lot of the colors I did to go with the pink and I wanted to keep everything else pretty light so this pink would really stand out. I've never painted a cherry blossom tree before, um, but I think it turned out alright. Um, I think I would have even made it a little bit wider if I did it again, but alright, let's finish this up. We're putting all the animals on, I'm just using some Mod Podge to stick them down. In order to get these uh, paper stick-ons to work correctly I had to go back in and fill in a lot of the gaps in my painting because I didn't draw the animals super accurately so if you see in the earlier shots there's like gaps when I lay them all on I just use some uh, silver paint and some more of that purple up front to fix a lot of the areas that were showing through and that's it all the animals are on we're done Look at that reflection, that shininess. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I was a little nervous, but I'm excited with how the artwork turned out. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for watching. This is how the final product turned out. Uh, I hope you guys all liked it, and I hope you tune in next time. Thank you so much.